I'm Craig Rowe here, and today we're going to be talking about positive self-talk. Let's get into it. If you're a beginner coach and or teacher, and you're looking to help your athletes improve, then you are in the right place. Here on the OzSwiss channel, we help you help your athletes improve. So if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that notification bell and the subscribe button so you get notified when I upload new videos. Later in this episode of The Coach Approach, I will share with you a bonus tip to help your athletes improve. So make sure you stay to the end for that. But today, I thought we would talk about positive self-talk and how you can help your athletes improve in-game. So there are two types of self-talk. Of course, there is positive self-talk, which is the ideal situation, and there is also negative. Before I get into the two and the advantages of positive self-talk, I want to talk about what self-talk actually is. So self-talk is actually that inner voice that you hear sometimes when you're navigating your day. So it's really just internalizing verbally things you might be thinking and or doing. The problem with negative self-talk is that negative self-talk actually encourages two hormones to become prevalent. Based on your thought process, if you are actually thinking negative thoughts, then you're going to activate the fight and flight system, even if minutely. So what you're going to do is engage your fight and flight system, which is going to release cortisol, and that is going to actually give you stress. And then you're also going to release some adrenaline. And what adrenaline does is it actually gives you fear and anxiety. So those are good if you're trying to run from a situation that you're frightened or fearful of in the real world. However, when you're in an environment where that isn't actually necessary, you may actually inhibit or hinder your ability to actually think rationally. So we want to minimize those in a sporting environment so we can stay focused. So the concept of positive self-talk is really important because it's going to release some other chemicals into the brain. So what we want to do is minimize those negative chemicals, those negative hormones that we actually have that make us do certain things. So here's the advantage of positive self-talk. With positive self-talk, you're actually reinforcing positive statements which make you feel good about a situation. So rather than having the higher expectation, you are setting an, a realistic type goal or example for yourself. So let's look at an example. So I had a player who wasn't having a good shooting run. He actually was in a rut. He was one of my best shooters. So I took him aside one day and said, let's do a shooting session. And I was observing his mannerisms and as he was shooting and he was missing and he was extremely frustrated. So I asked him the question, what do you say to yourself when you're missing? He would say, come on, you're better than this. So he was telling himself, come on, you're better than this. Now that might seem like a positive statement. It's actually not. It's almost saying you're not good. It's actually a reverse psychology mentally. And then when he made a shot, I said, what were you saying when you make the shot? And he would say about bloody time. Now, interestingly, both are negative connotations. So what I suggested he do is change the internal dialogue that he was presenting to himself from a negative thought process or, or in a, in a voice to a positive inner voice. So I gave him two simple things and you can give these to your athletes. The two things I said to him when he was shooting is if you make a shot, you say two words, good one or good shot. So what that does is when you say good shot, you're rewarding yourself and you're recognizing that the shot went in. It may not be technically a good shot, but it went in. So we want to go to school on every shot. So we want to learn from that shot. So we want to register in our brain what a good shot is and or feels like. On the flip side of that, when we miss, we don't want to focus on that miss because that puts us into a negative mind frame. Thus, the concept of positive self-talk. We don't want to go down that negative path. So what we would say or what you can have your athletes say when they miss a shot is say next one. So they're actually focusing on the next play or focusing on the next shot, knowing that if they've done their work and they've actually trained as best they can, that 
eventually the shots will drop and they need to have that mindset. So that particular athlete, after we did a couple of shooting sessions, came to the game after a shooting run the next week and he actually dropped 36 points. He hit 10 three-point shots and broke his drought. Now, I haven't seen the athlete for some time. It was probably about 18 months ago. So I don't know whether he's continued that positive self-talk, but the power of positive self-talk cannot be underestimated. So I really encourage you to ask your athletes, what is their inner voice telling them when they make and or miss shots or when they're in a tough situation? Also, our outward mannerisms demonstrate what we're thinking. And as a player, I did play the game and I was very conscious not to show my inner feelings to the outside world. So I didn't want the opposition to see blood in the water, so to speak, and gain advantage of a poor mental situation on my part. So I was very conscious to have mental resilience and mental toughness in a tough situation and not allow the opponents to get to me. Unfortunately, if you're showing outward negativity as well in game, there are athletes that will recognize that and take full advantage of your inability to cope in a particular moment if you get lost in a mistake or something like that. So just be conscious of what your athletes do and what outward emotions they may also be demonstrating. But do not underestimate the importance of positive self-talk. Now, a bonus tip that I wanted to talk about is actually visualization and imagery. As part of that training session that I did with my athlete to help him try and get out of his shooting rut, which he seemed to do after that episode uh, where we talked about positive self-talk, is we also had him shooting the ball with his eyes open and then closing his eyes, visualizing the same shot, and then shooting that shot with his eyes closed and trying to feel the shot. So imagery plays a really important part in your development as an athlete and as a person. It's been proved by research that if you think about playing a piano, if you're a piano player, it triggers all the same brain waves and things as if you are actually doing that exercise. So when we visualize in our mind us actually executing a skill, it is technically firing all the same parts of the brain as our normal training would actually do if we were physically doing the activity. Now, an example of this, I interviewed Brandon Steiner, who is a memorabilia mogul. I'll put a link in the video. And he actually talks about how he beat Michael Jordan in a game of four on four. And for a year, if you have to see the story, he was focused, very competitive individual, an entrepreneur, multimillionaire. And he talks about how he had it in for Michael Jordan and believed that he would get the day and his opportunity to actually play him and beat him and did and shares the story in the interview. And he talks about vision and having a bigger vision for yourself and the power of imagery. So check that video out if you haven't already done so. And that's the bonus tip is understand that you can visualize what you're meant to do in the game and you can encourage your athletes to use visualization to actually train the game without physically doing the activity. Now, uh, I want to talk about BitClout. I'm on BitClout now. So BitClout is a social media platform that is linked to a BitClout type coin. So if you want to support me in the creation of the, the content that I'm doing, I'll put a link to BitClout here. And you can actually, if you're on the platform, you can send me some BitClout. So uh, I'll put that. And also, don't forget, we're on Clubhouse. You can connect with me. If you have any thoughts around your experience with positive self-talk in game or with an athlete you've worked with, don't forget, you can leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'd love to hear from you and your thoughts around positive self-talk and your experience in that regard. And with that, that's another episode of The Coach Approach, and I hope you'll join me again next Friday when we do it all again with another episode. I hope to catch you in the next one. Thanks for checking out this episode of The Coach Approach. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please take time to leave a like, hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet subscribed, and also feel free to share your own experience in the comments below. We hope to see you again in the next one.